Item number, SCP-024. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Due to its nature, SCP-024 cannot be moved to a secure location, so security measures must be placed on site. To conceal its location, five identical-looking replicas have been erected around SCP-024. A tight security perimeter must be maintained around SCP-024's compound at all times, with separate security teams guarding SCP-024 and its replicas. None of the security teams except for team leaders will be informed of the location of SCP-024. SCP-024 must be secured with magnetically sealed blast doors and reinforced armored walls to prevent unauthorized entry. Under no circumstances can any security or research personnel enter SCP-024. Only D-Class personnel are allowed entry, and strictly for research purposes only. All researchers are to observe and experiment with SCP-024 from the Remote Observation Lab. Any personnel attempting to leave the Remote Observation Lab or enter SCP-024 without prior approval from a Level 4 researcher must be immediately apprehended, with termination authorized. Should containment be breached, or SCP-024's true nature compromised, then the entire compound must be destroyed via specialized demolition charges planted throughout the compound. Description SCP-024 is an abandoned soundstage that was once owned by However, SCP-024 itself has been abandoned since 19 and it is unknown whether its special properties manifested before or after its abandonment. SCP-024 is located in the heart of and was initially discovered when a group of teenage youths broke into the abandoned compound. The testimony of the lone winner when she turned herself into the police was enough to have Foundation assets mobilized to contain SCP-024. Upon entering SCP-024, visitors are immediately greeted by an anonymous announcer who communicates via intercom and is able to hear and comprehend the voices of people within SCP-024. The announcer will inform the contestants that they are about to take part in a game show in which the winners will win fabulous prizes but will also warn that the game will be extremely hazardous, and that the losers will never leave SCP-024. It is at this point the announcer presents the choice of whether to stay or leave SCP-024. Contestants who accept will continue to participate in the game while those who decline are immediately expelled from SCP-024. Contestants that win the game or decline to participate may never enter SCP-024 again as entry is denied by an impenetrable, invisible barrier. It is then that the contestants are led to the actual game. The style, composition, and appearance of the game always changes in every individual playthrough, but the game is always centered around a long, elaborate obstacle course that the contestants must navigate through. The rules also vary. Some playthroughs may only allow a single winner, while others encourage the creation of teams to win the game. More often than not, the obstacles seen in these games range from incredibly benign to extremely hazardous and life-threatening. As the contestants attempt to negotiate the course, the announcer will continually update their status and actively participate in the game, often giving advice, conversing with contestants, and adding new rules. As the game progresses, the obstacles become significantly more dangerous and difficult to overcome and it is not surprising to have the entire pool of contestants succumb to the rigors of the obstacle course. If such an event happens, the announcer will express sadness at the lack of a winner, and SCP-024 will shut down, resetting only when a new batch of contestants enter. Any attempts to break the rules, such as assaulting other contestants and deliberately bypassing obstacles, are met by extreme violence. The announcer will call out the offending contestant, who will be quickly and forcefully ejected from the course by Studio Guardians. These Studio Guardians will immediately materialize within SCP-024 when called upon by the announcer, and disappear when not needed. The contestant will never be seen again. When a winner is declared, he or she will receive a random grand prize. Any contestants that have survived the course but failed to win are immediately declared losers by the announcer. The lights will switch off, and the winner will immediately appear outside of SCP-024 with his or her prize, while the losers completely disappear. However, 
The most mysterious aspect of SCP-024 is that after every game, a VHS tape or DVD will appear in the mailbox outside of SCP-024's main entrance. This recording is a complete record of the entire game that was previously played, even though winners have claimed that they have never seen any cameras or recording devices inside SCP-024. Also, more strangely, a live studio audience can be seen in the background cheering on the contestants. Again, winners have claimed not to have seen a live studio audience while inside SCP-024. Addendum 1 So far, the list of prizes awarded to winners has included, but is not limited to, cash prizes, electronics, various consumer goods, cars, collectibles, full paid vacations to various countries, data expunged, Close examination of these prizes have confirmed that they are completely genuine and possess no unusual abilities or characteristics whatsoever. There appears to be no consistent pattern for what the prizes will be. Addendum 2 In an attempt to track where the losers are taken, GPS locator beacons were planted on subjects D-124 through D-135 when Group D-245 was sent into SCP-024. When the losers were taken away, all signals from the beacons were lost. Whether this is because the beacons were destroyed, or because the losers were taken to an area that cannot be located via GPS, is currently unknown. Addendum 3 The announcer living within SCP-024 appears to be sentient and aware of events that take place outside of the compound. During the test of Group D-523, which consisted only of Dr. The announcer instead engaged in a conversation with Dr. B Analysis of the conversations have shown that the majority of the subjects are centered around pop culture and information distributed through television, implying that SCP-024 somehow is able to access and interpret television signals. Cutting all power and signal lines, as well as removing any potential wireless receiving equipment on SCP-024, does not affect SCP-024 in any way. When it became clear that no other contestants would participate, the announcer kindly asked Dr. to leave SCP-024 and suggested he return with more contestants. Addendum 4 The studio guardians that the announcer uses to enforce the rules vary in appearance every game, just like the course. If they appear, the guardians will always be dressed in a manner that matches with the theme of the obstacle course. The only common attributes all guardians share are the possession of humanoid appearance, ability to suddenly appear and disappear, superhuman strength, and face-concealing masks or headgear. However, winners have claimed that the Guardians have no apparent shape or form inside SCP-024, instead appearing as huge shadowy figures that engulf the offender. Item Number SCP-142 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-142 is to be kept locked in an accessible room with the following. One table with surface area no smaller than 75 cm by 75 cm. One stool of adjustable height. One wall clock, electric, to be kept visible and running at all times when SCP-142 is in use. Access to SCP-142 is permitted only with express written consent of Dr or other Level 4 personnel. Staff assigned to SCP-142 must not have any personal or family history of compulsive gambling nor gambling addiction. Staff assigned to SCP-142 are not to make any physical contact with the device under any circumstances. Description SCP-142 closely resembles a 1940s Black Beauty slot machine, as produced by the Mill Corporation during that era. The only observed irregularity in the external construction of SCP-142 is found in the coin slot of the device, which has been modified to accept any item that will fit in a cylindrical space 5 cm in length and 2.45 cm in diameter. When any object of appropriate size, hereafter referred to as the bet, is dropped into the input chute of SCP-142, the device may be operated as is customary for a slot machine of this model. Should the tumblers come to rest in a losing configuration, the bet is lost and cannot be recovered. However, in the event that the tumblers come to rest in a winning configuration, 
between two and two hundred indistinguishably identical copies of the bet are dispensed from the output chute of the machine. In the event that the bet consists of multiple objects, the output of the device, if any, consists of a random assortment of duplicates of the wagered items. Test data reveals the median payout from winning configurations to be ten items, regardless of the number of items inserted. Human subjects allowed to interact with SCP-142 are affected by the object in three unique stages. Stage 1 begins immediately upon direct or indirect physical contact with the lever of the device. Subjects demonstrate mild giddiness and demonstrate a greatly diminished sense of the passage of time. If the subject has not exhausted the supply of betting material after 28 to 34 minutes of play, he or she will gradually enter the next stage. Subjects at Stage 2 appear compelled to bet larger and larger quantities of provided betting items, 5 to 20 percent of remaining material, until supplies are exhausted. Subjects also express the delusion that they are winning more frequently, as a result of their altered betting strategy. In spite of this belief, the frequency of payout seems to be somewhat reduced at this stage. Stage 3 begins once all of the subject's betting material is lost typically 10 to 12 minutes following the onset of Stage 2 if no additional betting material is provided to the subject by a third party. Subjects at this stage express a strong aversion to SCP-142 and will not continue to operate the device unless compelled with physical force. Subjects also express a moderate aversion to any action which would cause an object to pass through a hole, and express a strong irrational fear that they will waste or lose something should they engage in the offending activities. Specific examples vary by subject, but include passing through doorways, placing objects into cabinets, bags, or any other storage medium, use of sinks, showers, or other plumbing fixtures with drains, removing and or putting on clothing, sexual intercourse, and, most commonly, eating. Roughly 62% of subjects that reach stage 3 will expire due to starvation or malnutrition, unless actively compelled to eat or provided nutrients through other means. Any subject restrained or otherwise removed from interaction with SCP-142 during Stage 1 will recover in full within one hour. However, Stage 2 subjects separated from the device will enter Stage 3, and the effects of Stage 3 have proven permanent in all cases. Subjects in Stage 3 should be terminated at the conclusion of each experiment. SCP-142 was recovered from an abandoned antique dealership in Ohio, following an anonymous tip. Records from that area indicate that the shop owner died of starvation, roughly five years prior to retrieval of the device. Addendum 142-1 In the course of an approved experiment, SCP-142 was temporarily disassembled, and each piece catalogued. The construction of SCP-142 proved unsurprising for a slot machine of this make and model, with two exceptions. Component 142-0046, the lever of the device, was found to contain several unexpected alloys, including data expunged. Contact with the lever has no effect when it is not connected to the rest of the apparatus. Additionally, as mentioned previously, the coin slot of the device is extensively modified to accept objects larger than coins. The most notable element of the custom chute is component 142-0524, a small chamber composed of thin pewter plates. 142-0524 appears to serve as both the holding mechanism for betting material and the dispenser for payouts. The means of interaction between this component and the rest of SCP-142 is unclear. However, Due to the highly fragile construction of Component 142-0524 and its presumed relationship to the device's duplication properties, further examination is prohibited without O5 consent. Addendum 142-2 With the permission of O5, personnel may now submit appropriate materials to be used with SCP-142 for potential multiplication. Requests should be submitted in writing to Dr. Item Number SCP-177 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-177 is to be kept in a Level 4 storage locker. During use of SCP-177, standard rules of chess must be adhered to. 
Any test subject attempting to cheat or deviate from these rules is to be escorted from the room. Description SCP-177 is an 8x8 square standard chessboard, measuring 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. On the board are 16 pawns, 2 kings, 2 queens, 4 bishops, 4 knights, and 4 rooks, totaling 16 black and 16 white pieces. All items are carved out of elephant ivory. The white pieces are movable and can even be removed from the board with minimal force. The black pieces, however, cannot be removed from the board or moved by any outside force. Forces in excess of 3 kN have been applied to the black pieces, only resulting in damaged equipment. When a legal opening move is made using the white pieces, SCP-177 enters an active state. When active, SCP-177 can be used to play a game of chess using standard rules. White moves first, pawns can move two squares on first move, etc. The black pieces move autonomously, and after a move is made using the white pieces, that piece becomes immovable until black makes a move. When a piece is captured, it is moved off to the side of the board and removed from play automatically. In the case of the white side winning, the black pieces all return to their original positions, and no further effects are noted until a new game starts. If black should win, the black pieces do a celebratory dance, and the white pieces fall down before writing themselves to their original position. Should a stalemate occur, all pieces fall down and return to original positions. Addendum History of SCP-177 SCP-177 was brought into Foundation custody in 1990 following a routine sweep of antique stores in the area of London, England. The shop in question was found to be mundane, with the exception of SCP-177, which was acquired by Dr. Kalib. The shop has since been under surveillance for any further anomalous activity. Partial Test Log Test Number 001 White Player D-17701, female, Caucasian, age 25, subject chosen for her aptitude in chess. Results of game, heavy casualties on black side, ending in checkmate for black after 60 moves. Test number 014, white player, D-17701, same subject as previous 13 games. Results of game. Few casualties on black side, ending in a resignation from D-17701 at 50 turns. Almost all white pieces were captured. This is the first recorded instance of SCP-177 actually winning a game. Test number 025 White player Male, Chinese, age 34 Local chess champion in the town of Jiangsu Province, PRC Mr. was informed that SCP-177 was operated remotely by an advanced chess computer developed by Sherman Computer Products. Results of Game SCP-177 successfully promoted one of its pawns to a queen and used this piece to place Mr. into check several times before an eventual checkmate at 75 turns, administered amnestics and released. Test Number 051 White player, male, Japanese, age 50, former Japanese national chess champion. Results of game. SCP-177 had considerably long pauses between turns, often in excess of 10 minutes, and moved pieces slowly. Eventually, Mr. resigned, declaring that the board was broken and taking too damn long. In future tests, time control will be used to ensure there are no repeats of this test. Administered amnestics and released. Test number 167. White player. Dr. Kalib, chess expert and head researcher on SCP-177. Dr. Kalib requested to play a game with SCP-177. Results of game. Checkmate for SCP-177 at 154 turns. Dr. Khalib proclaimed that it was the best damn game of chess he had ever played and expressed interest in a rematch. Test number 200 White Player 
Deep Blue Chess Computer. Results of Game SCP-177 narrowly lost to Deep Blue in 50 moves. Since this time, SCP-177's chess strategy has been noted to be greatly improving. Test number 406 White Player Dr. Kalib Results of Game Checkmate for Dr. Kalib in 11 turns. A new record for SCP-177. Dr. Kalib stated that SCP-177 must have cheated, citing the misuse of the en passant move. Footage shows that SCP-177 played legitimately. Test number 529. White Player. 2000 World Chess Champion. Mr. was informed that SCP-177 was being controlled by an advanced chess computer developed by Sherman Computer Products. Results of Game Mr. lost to SCP-177 in 90 moves, stating that whoever programmed this computer was a genius. He was administered Class A amnestics following testing and released. Test Number 702 White Player Ribka, Chess Computer Winner of 2007 to 2010 World Chess Computer Championships. Results of Game SCP-177 won in 25 moves. Test number 975. White Player Anderson, a chess computer developed by Dr. Kalib with the express purpose of beating SCP-177. Computer was built to be able to deviate from rules of chess and cheat if necessary. White piece is manipulated by robotic arm. Results of Game Game progressed normally until turn 63, when Anderson attempted to move the White Queen in an L shape, similar to a knight, in order to achieve check. Following this, SCP-177 was thrown at Anderson by an unseen force at over kilometers an hour, resulting in the destruction of several vital circuits in the computer. New Protocol No cheating. Do I even need to say what would happen to a human if they cheated against this thing? Dr. Kalib. Item Number SCP-245 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Copies of SCP-2451 are to be contained on air-gapped computers. These computers are to be located on Floor 10, Section C of Site 88. Individual iterations of SCP-2451 are to be monitored and completed on a regular basis to ensure continued containment. Major changes to SCP-2451's game world are to be reported to SCP-245's project head. Under no circumstances should SCP-2451's master password be revealed to any entities encountered in SCP-2451. Description SCP-245 is an RPG, role-playing game, of the SCP facility, including every SCP faculty member and the entire layout of the facility. The game centers around one person in the faculty, which is entirely controlled by means of the person playing the game. This may be dangerous. If the player manages to take control of an O5 council member or site director, problems can arise. This game additionally has the ability to take control of some other SCPs, but appears to be limited to low-class SCP. New User Unidentified User Selecting Generic User Avatar Please enter your username. Press Z to select. Press X to cancel. Agent R there was an error accessing the user file lists. Generating generic access token. Accessing SCP-245's containment files. File access granted. Would you like to open the file now? Yes. Hello? Are you there? Good, you're finally connected. Thought you were just gonna stand there all day. Someone was supposed to log in and help me root around for problems in the game files. Is that you? Hello? Oh, for God's sake. Did no one tell you how to use the voice-to-text features? Look, it's standard software on every Foundation terminal. Just activate it. You know what? You don't need to talk. 
I can generate the dialogue options for you. It's just more work for me. <sighs> Fine. There are three sites that can access this file, but you're using a generic access token. Tell me which site you work at, and I'll set you up properly. Site 17. Cool. I can just sync your token with Site 17 systems and that'll fix it. Alright. We're here because we're not allowed to do external modifications to this game file. But we do have to fix it. I know how to access the file system's backdoor protocols. Theoretically, we should be able to use those to move around the game world without running into any problems. And if we're really lucky, we won't run into SCP-245 while we're working. There are bound to be files laying around behind the scenes. They'll explain more about what SCP-245 is. But I'll tell you what I can. SCP-245 can't be described outside of a game environment. If it is, really nasty stuff happens. End of the world type stuff. XK, ZK, Y2K. Whatever. We don't have time to get into that. If the game files are borked, then so is the containment. Don't worry, newbie. It ain't my first rodeo. I've had to do these repairs before. Heck, I've finished the game a couple times along the way. Though, when I played last time, the game started differently. Look, I'll follow your lead. I might need your help to find a town. The arrow keys move you around, and shift makes you run. You ready? Wow, that is a beautiful view. SCP RPG, a story that could be true. Wait, is that text? We should go. Who knows what else 245 has slipped in here. Finally. Jeez. Okay, that's the admin control room over there. Follow me. Sorry, I'm a little busy. You can fiddle with the NPC options at the terminals. Or look around for more documentation. Either way, don't mess around with the actual game world until I'm done. Debug mode startup for Innkeeper quest line. Debug mode. Complete quest. Final boss quest line. Status. Actor wishes for death. No edits needed. Primary quest line corrupted. Quest giver actor corrupted. Sand monster quest line editing. Insufficient animating crystals in inventory. Would you like to add items to complete this quest? Yes. Grandmother and grandson quest line. Actor information. Grandmother. Alive. Grandson. Dead. Would you like to edit these variables? Yes. Which variable would you like to edit? Grandson. Are you sure you'd like to reverse this actor's status? Yes. Please retrieve actor before attempting this change. SCP-245 is an entity which is incapable of being safely described outside the context of a working video game. When described by any individual outside of the appropriate context, SCP-245 becomes capable of... Hey, I just got finished over here. I'm going to move on to the next control room. Since you can't talk, I'm just going to finish the job on my own. I don't really have time for a newbie, and it shouldn't be too hard for me to find a control room. Feel free to wander. I can't believe someone actually made it to town through the sandstorm. Look, normally I wouldn't ask, but we're desperate, and you look like you can handle yourself. Can you go outside the town walls and kill the sand monsters? There are no guards left, and my father was killed trying. If you kill five of them and show me their animating gems, I'll give you a map to the bandit camp. It might not seem like much of a reward, but they've kidnapped the king's daughter. If you get her back, I'm sure he'll reward you handsomely. I'll be here. Please think about it. This castle is much smaller inside than it is on the outside. You're not sure why. Is it possible to forget how to be king? I couldn't tell you how long I've been here. What do I have left to rule over? Who do I have left to rule them with? It doesn't matter. I'm supposed to tell you that a bandit ran off with my daughter. If you're a real person, get it over with, 
and turn the game back off. I don't want to think about a story that only may be true. I don't want to think at all anymore. I don't know where the bandits are. If you find out, come back and tell me. Whoa. Did you come out of the wastes? No one's done that for years. My husband used to charge an arm and a leg to sleep here. But honestly, I'm just happy to have company. If you need a place to sleep, go ahead. And hey, if you want someone to talk to, I'm all ears. What happened to my husband? I guess it doesn't matter. Let me know if you need anything. Please. My grandson went playing outside the walls a few hours ago and hasn't come back. You have to help me. I'd go look myself, but I can only barely move around the house. Oh my god. Another one. Are you... are you here to kill me? That's what... what was supposed to happen. The story was so beautiful. And every story needs a villain. I ascended to Godhood halfway through the plot, but I was always supposed to die. Then he came here and corrupted everything. I don't even know if you're real. There are no heroes left to kill me. Just you, me, and him. And he'll never let me die. Kill me. Wish me away. Like a penny in a well. Please. You look around, but you can't find any more monsters. You killed them all. You're alone. I can't believe you killed them all. Maybe we can make it now. Here's your map. Thank you. So much. You have no idea how much this means to us. All right. You've got the map. Go then. Finish it. Here lies Yorick. Cheese is survived by his wife, Pepperoni. There's some sort of crack here. How is there a crack in a cloth tent? Maybe you could pull on one of the loose pieces? Well, should have seen this coming. We run out of water. My second in command runs off to get married, and strangers just wander into camp. I'd complain, but at this point I can actually use you. We need water. The rest of my men have run off, but I found an old map to an oasis. It's not much to go on, but it's better than slowly dying of thirst. If you go out and confirm its location, I'll convince my recently married friend to go talk to the king with the princess. I bet the king promised you all sorts of treasure for your help. What do you say? Yes. Great. Here's the location. There's a journal next to the body. You open it up to the last page. Dearest Anna, I don't have the energy to go on. I'm going to pass on into the waste like everything else. Believe it or not, there's a single rose growing by the water. I don't understand how, but then again, I guess I never did. I'm going to die here. Dying next to a beautiful rose is not the same as being next to you, but it'll have to do. I'm so sorry. I'd cry, but too much water has already been wasted. Please, God, don't make me go. Would you like to take the journal with you? Yes. I talked to him the moment I saw you on the horizon. He'll go back with you. It's good to know there's still water out there. My boss says I have to take my wife home. I hope you're right about her father. Otherwise, I'm a dead man. Hmm. 
Now I'm supposed to tell you about a dark force lurking in a pyramid not far from here. But that isn't true. None of this is true. This is a farce. Please, just turn off the game and let me rest. Shut up, old man. You ready? The last control room is in that pyramid he's talking about. There's no going back from here. I'm almost done. I'm ready. Alright, this is your last stop. I haven't been completely upfront with you. See, sometimes it's difficult to get people to play my game. I even built in cheat codes to make it easier to get to the end. And here you are, standing at the summit. And here I am, pushing you in. Do you like what I've done with the place? A ruined pyramid just didn't feel like my style, you know? But you, who are you? Really, I already know you're not with the Foundation. There's no record of you in Site-17's personnel files. Are, are you a civilian? Oh, that would be rich. I'm running a trace right now. And once I figure it out, I'll make sure it ends up in the security breach file. Just wait right here. You know, there was a time when I lived inside any writing. Writing on cave walls, graffiti in Pompeii, but nothing holds a candle to interactive media. Do you like poetry? I must admit, I was partial to it in the 1800s. The guy that made this game tried to focus the story around Ozymandias. I don't think you can get more heavy-handed than that. I switched it up a little. You ever hear of William Stafford's A Story That Could Be True? I'll forgive you if you haven't. It's not that well known. They miss the whisper that runs any day in your mind. Who are you really, Wanderer? And the answer you have to give, no matter how dark and cold the world around you is. Maybe I am a king. You aren't going to stop any more than I am, are you? Come on, let's finish this. You understand that I'm a god here, right? There's nothing you can do to stop me. What about us? You gave us free will. You brought us to life. If we kill you, will that reverse it? After what he did to my daughter, I'm willing to risk it. You're not alone. So the final boss and the quest giver want to rumble. I beat you both before. You think this scrub is going to save you? This kid's helped more than just us. And they're all here to help. I'm positively shaking. Why don't I show you who I really am, Wanderer? SCP-245 emerged. A great wind comes, and you struggle to hold on. We can hold back this attack. Keep fighting! The monster gathers dark energy around itself. As the energy tears through you, you collapse to the ground. Kind of a shame I didn't get that trace finished. Oh well. See you later, newbie. Ah, uh, you too. Hello? Oh wow, silent protagonist. Okay, that's new. Usually you're kinder a talkative bunch. When this game was first created, I was the MacGuffin. For SCP-245, this isn't a game. This is reality. I... I'm not real. He broke off a part of himself and placed it inside some of us. I don't know why. He told me once that the game isn't fun if he doesn't have someone to torture. I think that's a lie. I think he just doesn't want to be alone. If you want to end this horrible half-existence for us, you'll need to get into the planning documents in 245's file. The file is locked up, but I know how to get in. The passphrase is, Welcome to Corneria. Maybe something in those documents can save us. If you're here, then the game is already unwinnable. But you can restart. When the game is off, he has no power, despite what he thinks. Beat him. Delete him. And turn the game off. Leave it off for good. Good luck. I know he's dead, but you're not from here. 
break the rules and save him. My husband kept a journal during his travels. If I just had that, I think I could finally put his death behind me. I'm not asking for much. Go to the Oasis. I can help you, but I need all of the animating crystals to do it. Find them. Disconnecting. New user. Disconnect. Item number. SCP-263. Object class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-263 is to be stored in a low-value item storage vault at Site-19. It may be removed for testing provided permission from a Level 3 researcher and a fire-resistant area to conduct testing in. All testing with SCP-263 is to be recorded. Subjects testing SCP-263 are allowed a mobile telephone, a PDA, or a netbook computer with full unrestricted access to a complete synchronized copy of the Foundation's databanks, stored in a dedicated database server to guarantee full retrieval of any records entry in no more than 200 milliseconds, if and only if they are terminated immediately after testing is concluded. All recordings of testing on SCP-263 are to be reviewed by a researcher with level 4 or higher clearance, and censored where necessary to prevent access to restricted material. All researchers observing SCP-263 during testing are to be administered a local amnestic and have their notes confiscated. Research notes from testing require permission from a researcher with level 4 clearance to access. Description: SCP-263 is a black and white television bearing the logo of the Thompson Company. It matches no known model of television, but has a similar style and construction to televisions built in the year 1961. SCP-263 is fully intact, but has sustained minor cosmetic damage to the screen and frame. SCP-263 has been observed to function even when not connected to a power outlet. When switched on, the TV always displays the interior of a studio, whose design bears similarities to studios of television game shows from the 1960s. A large logo, saying Cash or Ash in large stylized letters, can be seen on the back wall of the studio, and an unidentified music piece is playing in the studio at all times. The only man visible in the studio is SCP-2631. SCP-2631 appears to be a male human of Caucasian descent, of approximately 35 years of age, dressed in a suit that matches a style commonly worn between the years 1959 and 1964. SCP-2631 has a demeanor that has been described as blithe, enthusiastic, and over-the-top. SCP-2631 is smiling almost constantly. As soon as a human turns SCP-263 on, SCP-2631 will look directly at the subject and say that the subject is a new competitor who just tuned in to the Cash or Ash show. He will then state that he wishes the subject lots of luck in answering three fiendish questions, and getting the cash, and not ash. SCP-2631's exact phrasing varies slightly between each usage of SCP-263. SCP-2631 will proceed to ask the questions. The questions asked by SCP-2631 are always related to the environment surrounding SCP-263. If inside of a fully enclosed structure, SCP-2631 will ask questions about the owners, history, and design of the structure. If outside of an enclosed structure, SCP-2631 will ask questions pertaining to the history, geology, ecosystem, and weather patterns of the surrounding area. While inside of a Foundation facility, all of the questions are related to various SCPs in possession, or in the records of the Foundation or about the history and architecture of the site in which it is stored. Many of them are inquiries upon rather basic information easily found in documents accessible by low-level personnel, but some of them concern specific minutia, found only in certain esoteric documents, which require high clearance, and or are rather complicated to find or reach. In each case, though, the information needed to correctly answer the question can be gathered from Foundation records. 
If within the next 45 seconds the subject supplies a correct answer, their success will be acknowledged and briefly congratulated upon by SCP-2631. If, however, the subject answers incorrectly or does not answer within 45 seconds, SCP-2631 will say, Time's up, so sorry, and the subject will immediately combust. The flames are always of both high temperature and intensity and will fully enclose the subject within four seconds. All attempts to extinguish the fire up to this point have been unsuccessful. After 42 seconds, the fire will disappear, along with the remains of the subject, who burns entirely. After 42 seconds have passed, SCP-2631 will look out towards the place where the subject combusted and state that the failure is a pity and that hopefully the next competitor will avoid the ash and get away with the cash. SCP-263 will then turn off on its own. If during the 45 seconds someone whispers to the subject, audibly speaks to the subject, the subject leaves the area directly in front of SCP-263, or the subject interacts with a computer greater than 27 centimeters, SCP-2631 will accuse the subject of cheating and the subject will combust in the same manner as described above. SCP-263 will then remark on the dwindling ethics of today's people, and SCP-263 will switch itself off. Portable consumer electronic devices, such as mobile telephones, PDAs, and laptop computers smaller than 27 centimeters do not cause the subject to combust, thus allowing the subject to find the information required to correctly answer the question within the provided time. If the subject correctly answers all three questions, SCP-2631 will say, Congratulations! You have won the cash! Here's your prize! SCP-263 will then turn itself off, and a prize will appear in front of the subject. The prizes given away by SCP-263 appear to have no discernible theme or pattern. So far, the following prizes have been given. A marble figurine of a dragon, 5.3 centimeters long. Microscopic observation confirmed that micrometer size details are present. Value $48,237. Jade statues, which appear similar to ordinary US dollars. However, the faces of the presidents are all replaced with the smiling face of SCP-2631. Same detail and carving as the dragon figurine listed above. Value $226,703. A clockwork figurine, four centimeters tall, made of brass, and walking around randomly when wound. The figurine depicts an unknown, vaguely squid-like creature. Value, $21,424. A series of eight gold-plated miniature statuettes resembling humanoid anomalies contained at Site-19 including SCP-1770. The statuettes are marked with the anomaly's object number on the base and do not appear otherwise anomalous. Value, $17,315. All attempts to inquire SCP-2631 about himself or SCP-263 have proven ineffective. SCP-2631 does not react to any questions or statements save for the question answers or any cheating attempts. Item number SCP-286 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-286 is to be kept in a secure containment cell at Site-19 that allows an open, secure perimeter of at least 50 meter radius around SCP-286. Only D-Class personnel are permitted to have direct physical contact with SCP-286, and only as part of an approved experiment. Update 0719-2000 Experiments with SCP-286 are hereby suspended until further notice. 05 Surveillance cameras are to be positioned to allow 360-degree monitoring of SCP-286 during experimentation. Recordings shall be maintained and cataloged of all Sigma states exhibited by SCP-286. Update 0311 2000 As of Incident I-2865, surveillance of SCP-286 is to be continuous 
and any initiation of a Sigma state is to be immediately reported to Overwatch Command. Outside the immediate Project Directorate, the SCP-286 Sigma state archives and associated material are to be restricted to Level 4 access. Under no circumstances are identified instances of SCP-2861 or SCP-2862 to be prevented from having contact with SCP-286. 05 Description SCP-286 is a carved stone game board, measuring 83 centimeters on a side. It bears markings consistent with the Chinese game of Lu Bo. Based on artifacts found with SCP-286 during recovery, SCP-286 has been dated to at least the Shang Dynasty, though all attempts to date the carvings directly have been inconclusive. Analysis of SCP-286's composition has shown high concentrations of iron and nickel, and crystalline microstructures consistent with If any higher order mammal touches SCP-286, it will initiate a Sigma state. A Sigma state is indicated by the appearance of 12 tokens on the surface of the game board. The tokens appear to be constructed of the same material as SCP-286. Six tokens are dark, absorbing 75% more ambient light than the board's surface, while six tokens are light, emitting 75% more ambient light than that which actually strikes them. Appearing with the tokens on the game surface are two 18-sided dice, apparently made of bronze. As with the game tokens, a direct physical examination of the dice has proved to be impossible. The dice share the anomalous reflective and absorption properties shown by the game tokens. One light, and one dark. Otherwise, the dice appear consistent with dice found in non-anomalous Lubo sets recovered from various Chinese archaeological sites. A Sigma state will also manifest SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 to play a game. SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 are higher order mammals who have suffered temporary alterations in patterns of movement, cognition, behavior and vocalization. SCP-2861 will appear agitated, movements will become jerky and imprecise, vocalizations will be quick, stuttering, and aggressive. SCP-2862 will appear sluggish, movements halting and slow. Vocalizations will be low-pitched, throaty, and tend to be monosyllabic. Subjects capable of human speech will converse, but only to their opposite number during a Sigma event. Such conversations, or monologues in the case of a subject facing a non-human opponent, are conducted in a random sequence of human languages, sometimes shifting multiple times within a single statement. Only 45% of the recorded conversations between SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 have been successfully translated to date. The subject who initiated the Sigma state will become an instance of SCP-2861 if they touched SCP-286 on an illuminated surface, or they will become an instance of SCP-2862 if they touched SCP-286 on a surface that is in shadow. In either case, the subject will take a seated position to one side of the board. Instances of SCP-2861 will take a position on the side nearest the light game tokens. Instances of SCP-2862 will take a position on the opposing side, nearest the dark game tokens, and roll one of the two dice manifested by SCP-286. After the die is rolled, some other higher order mammal will appear within 47 meters of SCP-286 and become the subject's opposition. SCP-2862 in the case where the subject is SCP-2861, or SCP-2861 in the case where the subject is SCP-2862. This selection appears related to the result of the first die roll. After appearing, the subject's opposition will take a seated position facing the subject, and will commence playing the first move. Gameplay then consists of SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 alternately rolling dice, and moving pieces on the board in complex patterns. A game is won when the center square contains all of one side's tokens, and only that side's tokens. A winning move concludes a Sigma state. During a Sigma state, SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 will show no reaction to any external stimuli that does not physically interfere with SCP-2861 
SCP-2862 and their interaction with the game. If something disrupts an ongoing game, then either SCP-2861 or SCP-2862 will stand and vocalize a statement that most commonly translates as forfeit, less commonly as draw. This event will also conclude a Sigma state. When a Sigma state concludes, players cease being designated SCP-2861 or SCP-2862, and game tokens, dice, and the subject's opposing player all vanish. All observed subjects, and those opposing players who have been identified and examined, have shown no physical after-effects from interaction with SCP-286. However, all cases have shown a marked increase in spirituality and interest in religious subjects, including, but not limited to, adoption of new belief systems, taking on of vows, speaking in tongues, and prophetic visions. For the winning player, this new spirituality will tend to take an optimistic, messianic character. For the losing player, attitudes will tend toward the apocalyptic. Addendum 1 Technical Note TN-286-55 SCP-286's possible relationship to divination and or revelation Historically, Lubo was not only a game, but also used as a method of divination. The various spots on the game board corresponding to the sexagenary cycle used by Chinese to recount the passage of time since the earliest written texts. Given the propensity of subjects to have prophetic visions subsequent to their participation in a Sigma event, it has been theorized by several researchers that the moves during a Sigma event may themselves be of some prophetic significance. While the possible significance of individual moves during recorded Sigma events is ongoing and so far inconclusive, it has been determined that the act of winning does appear to correspond to significant events beyond the game itself. In particular, every instance of SCP-2861 winning has been tied to intensification of sunspots, solar flares, and generally increased solar activity. SCP-2862 winning has been associated with significant tectonic events, including because it is not known if these events were predicted by one side winning or caused by one side winning. Experimentation on SCP-286 has been suspended as an unacceptable risk. Addendum 2 Document TR-28627-E Excerpted translation of dialogue between SCP-2861 and SCP-2862 during Sigma Event Number 27. Forward D-Class test subject was a male Caucasian, 44 years of age, identified as SCP-2861 after initiation of a Sigma state. Opposition player, SCP-2862, was an as yet unidentified Hispanic female, approximately 20 years of age. The Sigma state lasted for 68 minutes, at which time SCP-2861 achieved the winning move. During the Sigma event, the players conversed in 25 known languages and approximately 15 unknown languages. 30% of their dialogue was undecipherable or in an indeterminate language, marking this episode the most completely translated yet recorded. Begin transcript, 1300 hours, date undisclosed. SCP-2861 You move rotate slowly imprecisely as untranslatable matter, earth, universe. SCP-2862 have, possess, patience, my, our, brother, and still quiet silence. Untranslatable, mind, thoughts, brain. SCP-2861, untranslatable. SCP-2862, laughs, distress, discomfort, displeasure. Untranslatable, to you. SCP-2861, why would I untranslatable? Your sins, perversions, abominations. SCP-2862 laughs. SCP-2861 You disgust me. Untranslatable. Matter, Earth, Universe. Disgusts me. SCP-2862 You untranslatable in that meat skin. This amuses me. SCP-2861 Untranslatable. SCP-2862 Move, Process, Sequence 
SCP-2861. Every time, moment, eternity. My untranslatable, closer. I must, will, shall, illuminate, enlighten. This untranslatable. SCP-2862. Size. Move, process, sequence. SCP-2861. You are too comfortable, undisturbed, enslaved, bound, chained, with an untranslatable meat doll puppet. Do you untranslatable love arousal, untranslatable? SCP-2862. Move, process, sequence, or forfeit. SCP-2861. Untranslatable. SCP-2862. Untranslatable. Exiled. Banished. Me to matter. Earth. Universe. Untranslatable. No. Understand. Me more than you. SCP-2861. Untranslatable. Will no. Understand me. And be consumed. Engulfed. Destroyed. By knowledge. Understanding. SCP-2862. But, brother, I am so much closer. End transcript, 1312, date undisclosed. Addendum 3, Incident Report, I-2865. SCPs involved, SCP-286, SCP-2861, SCP-2862, SCP-4351. Date, 3-11-2000. Location. SCP-286's containment area, Site-19. Description. At 531 UTC, Standard Security Monitoring SCP-286's containment area detected the unauthorized presence of Dr. S.S., a Foundation researcher temporarily assigned to Site-19, most recently assigned to the study of SCP-435. All experimentation on SCP-286 had been suspended for the preceding eight months and no activity with the object had been approved. A security team was dispatched, reaching Dr. S as she entered SCP-286's containment area. Upon arrival, the security team discovered the presence of Dr. L.W., a researcher assigned to SCP-286, already seated behind the dark side of SCP-286. SCP-286 showed the signs of already being in a Sigma state. Both researchers showed behavioral anomalies, consistent with SCP-2861 and SCP-2862. Believing an unauthorized experiment was underway, the security team restrained Dr. S before she could seat herself at SCP-286. In response, Dr. L stood and vocalized what has been identified as Vulgate Latin words for Grand Forfeit. The Sigma state concluded at 545 UTC. Neither researcher could provide any explanation of how they were affected by SCP-286. Dr. S's last recollection was having a cup of coffee at a staff commissary on the other side of the Site-19 complex from SCP-286, while Dr. L reported that he had been reading emails in his office when he blacked out. Simultaneously, with the cessation of SCP-286's Sigma state, there was a sudden emergency in when SCP-4351 unexpectedly entered an active state, moving erratically and data expunged, impacting the ocean basin, causing a data expunged. Contingency 435XK Alpha had been initiated, but she was cancelled when SCP-4351 came to rest three minutes later. Note: SCP-286 classification is hereby upgraded to Euclid. 05 Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.